Desiree Miller lost her sister, nephew, and brother-in-law, who were burnt alive after being trapped in their fully grilled apartment at Cummins Lodge, Greater Georgetown, on June 27. 40-year-old Beverly Miller, her 46-year-old husband Marvin Lewis, a businessman of Port Kaitumen Region 1, and their 14-year-old son, Dowal Ifill, were found huddled together after the fire. Desiree told the newsroom during a telephone interview on Wednesday that the family is still in shock over the incident. The woman said she is now trying to get her life back to some level of normalcy. I went to house and had to go back, but then they ain't seeing nobody now. You want to make a point for city minutes and all of that. Because I applied for a piece of land, I get no callers yet. When did you apply? 2030. Beverly Miller is survived by her other son, 17-year-old Alani Eiffel. The newsroom understands that the family is also looking into the teen acquiring lands that Beverly applied for years ago. Meanwhile, Police Commander Senior Superintendent Philip Azor told the newsroom that there has been no progress with the investigation. The building had eight apartments and a total of 28 persons lived there. The landlord, who is stranded in the United States due to COVID-19, had left his son and daughter in charge of the apartment. The fire is believed to have been deliberately set by the son who had just left the building before it engulfed in flames. He was reportedly collecting rent from tenants. He was arrested by police but was released after 72 hours. There has also been a long-standing dispute between the owners of the building. Well, so for this one, I keep saying nobody ain't really telling we were really going on. Yesterday, the man for the son talked to me. I done saying, um, I'm sorry for what happened. So I said, sorry, can't burn back three life. First, me nephew without a mother. Whatever little people give me, they go with me second. Marvin Lewis's sister, Coretta Wolford, who lived in the building with her five children, her niece and her husband, also spoke with the newsroom via telephone Wednesday. She explained that she got through with her land in February this year, but lost all the documents in the fire. According to Wolford, the Central Housing and Planning Authority has not been helpful in assisting her with retrieving the documents. All my documents born up in the fire. So I have no documents. I went at housing this morning to see the minister. And they say you can't see the minister. The minister come for go to some meeting. And they send me to the see some CEO. The secretary say I can't see him just like that. And all these push around. So I don't know. Since the COVID-19 health crisis, Wolford said she has been unable to work. It has also been an emotional journey for the victims, and as such, they are staying in touch and supporting each other. I'm still the fire. You know, I would say we're trying to cope because I'm not working. So nobody tell us anything. The police never call us to tell us anything about what the fire report stated or anything. So the little that people would offer, well, we're grateful for the little that they offer. Well, we, they all live like a family there. Yeah. So uh, we would say we all, well, we as the family still, eh? Because that's how we live from the time we live in there. That's all, that's how all we live. We eat in one. From time to time, we would share whatever we have with one another, just like a family, you know. The family continues to call for justice for the three lives lost in the fire. Reporting for the newsroom, I am Isinella Patwo.